Hi everybody and welcome back. I am a hacker and it's really nice to have you on board. In this video, we'll look at login with Jim's user account. And just to add a little bit to the background of this video, I am doing a series on CTF that is hacking into OWASP juice shop. It is just a walkthrough for beginners to learn how to approach certain type of CTF challenges and getting started with CTF and hacking. So let's get started. In the last video, we did resolve the login with administrator user account. If you are interested in looking at that, that is a bit basic challenge. So you would understand, if you watch that video first, you would understand better this video. Uh, anyway, I will link it down in the description and you can decide for yourself if you want to watch it. Anyway, let's log in with the gym's user account. So I'll come over to the front end. And in order to log in with uh, the gym's user account, I will go to the login page. Now look here, the first thing we need in the login is the email of Jim and the second thing is the password. Like we can bypass the uh, password but the email is necessary. So the first step is to find out the Jim's email. I can look for email manually because I know where the email is and also I know that there are a little bit like few items that are listed on this website but in bigger application with bigger scope and everything you need to use something called email harvester or some application that can find emails on a web page where you can provide the URL to it and it lists all of the emails. So email harvester is something that will do the job for you. If you are interested just leave a comment down below and I will create a video on that as well. Anyway, in our case, I will look one by one and find out, you know, here uh, is the Bender's email and here is Stain and Bender and right over here, we have Jim's email, right? So we have found the Jim's email. Now what I can do is I can enter that email right over here and after that I can add a comma and then dash dash. Once I do that, I can enter password and the password could be anything. I have entered one, two, three, four, five, six and click on login. You would see that, that I have successfully completed the challenge. So our main goal was to log in with Jim's user account. And by the way, I also have a Dave2 account where I post written tutorials. So I'll link them down in the description as well so that you can have a written overview as well. Anyway, just to recap, our main goal was to solve the challenge which was logging with Jim's user account. So in order to complete that challenge, the first target was to find the Jim's email and we did that by looking around here and there. And as I said, you can find the emails with email harvester or email finder. Those are Kali Linux application. You can use them if you have a bigger scope and a bigger website. Anyway, for us, it was pretty easy because there was a few items listed on the site. So I looked at every item and found the Jim's email. Once I found the Jim's email, I was able to, uh, because I knew that the website is vulnerable to SQL injection. So I used a simple technique of SQL injection and logged in with the Jim's account. Anyway, if you're willing to do the same thing with uh, Python code, you can do that pretty easily. I will create a new file by the name of jim.py and the first thing I need is to import requests because we need request library. The second thing would be to import URL lib3 and I have explained this quite a few times. In my previous video, we were working with the same three libraries. The sys is used for getting the system orgs that are inserted uh, from the terminal. The request library is used to send a post request or get request to the URL and the URL lib3 is used to disable warnings and uh, all of the other stuff. So what we need is request URL lib and we need to also import the sys library. Once I do that, then I have to disable the warnings. That would be URL lib3 disable warnings, URL uh, lib3.exceptions.insecure warnings. And what it will do, 
it, if we make a request to HTTPS or HTTP and we get some errors or warnings in the response that our website is not secure, it would disable those warnings and we'll get a clean response on the console. Once I do that, the next thing I need is to add proxies. And as I said, if we are willing to propagate or tunnel our request through Burp, we need to have this proxies because Burp works uh, using 127.0.0.1 and the port 8000. So I'll create two things. The first one would be for HTTP 127.0.0.1 and the port would be 8000 and it would be for the HTTP and the second one would be HTTPS and it would be the same thing. Okay, once the APIs are okay. Now the next thing we need is to create a main function that would be if underscore underscore name is equal to underscore underscore main and I will call main function right over here. And let's create that main function. That would be main function anyway. In that main function, the first thing I, I want to do is I want to try if the user did enter the URL. So URL would be equal to sys.argv. What is the sysargv? Well, the sysargv is an array that stores all of the argument, arguments entered by the user from the terminal. In the previous video, I did show in a great details what that is. I will link the video down in the description so that you can check it out. Anyway, I will go fast in this video. If the user didn't enter a URL, what I want to do is I want to print some helpful messages so that the user understand what to do next. That would be uh, minus usage percent s URL. And after that, I will write person sys dot arg v zero. And in the arg v zero, we have the name of the program. The next thing I want to do is I want to show him an example. That would be www.example.com. And after that, I want to exit the program because we don't have any URL. So we cannot work with it. Anyway, once we are done with that, now let's run the program and see if we are getting the result what we wanted. So go to where my projects are and activate my virtual ENV. Once the virtual ENV gets activated, now I'll run the program, which was gym.py. And you can see that if I don't enter a URL, it would show me how I can run the program. And what I need to do is I will come over here and after the program, I will add the URL. So just to show you that we are working with the right thing, I will print this URL right over here. Save the program, come back to the terminal, run the program again, and you can see that we are getting the right URL. Okay. Now, if you remember how we did resolve the challenge, that was by coming over to the login page and then in the email by entering the gym's email. Once we do that, we can then enter a single code and then dash dash. What the single code would do, it would break down the query. Let me show you how, how we are doing it. So we have a query that is select star from users where username is equal to this and password is equal to this. Now what I'm doing is I add the email address of Jim and then close out this portion by a single quote and then in order to ignore the rest of the query I add two dashes and that ignores the rest of the query. So this is how we are doing anyway. Once I do that and enter some gibberish password and click on login, you would see that right over here in the post, we are making a request to this URL. We are making a request to this URL. And in the request data,
we have these two things so i'll have some notes right over here anyway what i want to do is i want to create another function if the user enters a url what i want to do is i want to call another function and that would be login as gym and that function is not yet created but it's wishful thinking okay now what this function would do is it would first create a URI and what would be the URI? It would be the rest of the things that a URL doesn't have. So that would be slash. Anyway, once we create the URL, then the next thing would be to create a data variable and send the email that we had right over there and the password from there. So that would be like this. Once our data is set, now the next thing I want to do is I want to create a request and that would be R is equal to remember the request library that we imported earlier. That would be request.post. The first argument would be to send the URL plus the URI and what I'm doing with this plus is I'm concatenating the two things and that would the URL would get sent from the main function. Okay, now the next thing I want to want to send is the data that we have created. And the next thing would be to verify equal to false. And after that I want to propagate or channel or tunnel through the request using verb. If you don't want to, you can just remove the proxies. But I, I, I like it that way because if my program gets messed up or something goes wrong, I do have some debugging mechanism or some easy steps to uh, like, I have complete history to do so. Anyway, I would say r print r.text which would print the response I'm getting from the server. I will save everything, come back to my program and try to run it. And we are getting error because there is a slight problem that is the port is 8080, not 8000. It's 8080 and I will save that, come back to the uh, terminal, run the program again and you would see that we are logged in with the gym's user account. I can also get this authentication token. By the way, it's a JWT token that gets generated. If you are willing to understand what JWTs are, how that works, I can create a video. We can also get the email and the token and everything by using a JSON library, but I guess it's out of the scope of this video. Our main achievement was to log in with the gym's account. The first thing what I did was I resolved the challenge using the web interface. And after that, I created a Python program that does the same. We took some notes. We worked with it. I hope you did understood. If anything is missing or if you didn't understood anything, please leave a comment down below and I will surely create a video or explain it in any manner you want me to. Anyway, this is pretty much it. You can find this code on my GitHub page. I will link it down in the description. Have a pleasant day. Bye for now. I will see you in the next video.